What I eat in a day 2022. I believe it's been a couple of years since I've shared with you what I eat in a day. This is also, I believe, the fourth time I've shared what I eat in a day since starting YouTube in 2016. Let me share with you that I am 50 years old. I will be 51 this coming June. I am also in my weight maintenance window, which is 120 to 125 pounds. I'm five foot six inches tall, typically a size two or a 26 in jeans. I am the perfect weight for my height and my physique, which tells me that what I eat on a typical day is working for me, but we are going to talk about that. But before we do, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Tracy Hensel. I'm a certified professional coach and owner of Hensel Coaching and Consulting. I help people just like you identify what your goals are, what's holding you back from achieving those goals, and then we put together a plan so that you can execute and deliver in those goals. If your goal is to lose weight or maintain a weight window, I would love to help you. If you check out the description box below today's video, you'll find a link to my Hensel Coaching and Consulting website where you can look at my coaching packages and sign up to work with me. I also have a personal brand website that you can check out as well, and there are a lot of recipes on there, including recipes to some of the foods that you will see me share with you today. When it comes to diet and what I'm going to put in my body, it's all about what I want to achieve. It's all about what the goal is. My goal, my number one goal is to nourish my body and to be healthy. I have an aggressive schedule. I have a really aggressive schedule between work and play, family. It's very aggressive and I love it. I'm living an abundant and optimal life and I sure hope you can as well if you're not currently and I would love to help you with that. But in order to keep my energy up for everything that I do, don't forget I have five daughters and I have a grandbaby. I have a lot on my plate and a full-time business. I need energy to stay up with everything that I do. So number one, I need to nourish my body with healthy, nutritionally dense food so that I can achieve that. The other goal is to maintain my weight window. I want to maintain my weight window. I don't have any other clothing to wear if I creep out of my weight window. So that's a big, a, a big deal. That's a big deal to, to eat the right food so that I can maintain my weight window. Also, I want to maintain my physique goals. And that's something people miss sometimes because it's one thing to lose weight and get to your ideal weight, but what do you want your physique to be made up of? I've been about 120 to 125 my whole adult life, but I can't say my physique always looked the way that it does today. I was very skinny fat for many years. In fact, I look much better at 50 than I did at 25, believe it or not. Maybe not my skin, but you better believe I'm way more fit. Although I was tiny, I was a skinny fat version of that. So my physique goals and how I like my body to look, the food that I eat plays a big role in that, believe it or not. It's not all about exercise. The other thing, easiness. Again, I have an aggressive, aggressive schedule. I have a full plate every single day, and it's, an, it's a beautiful plate, believe me. But I need easiness, so I don't need a lot of complicated, and I'll share with you that typically complicated means recipes. And guess what's in recipes? Lots and lots of food that can add lots and lots of calories and lots and lots of fat and carbohydrates and all these extras that we don't need. I don't need foo-foo. I just need easy, but I do need my food to taste good. Very important, and I have found with working with my clients, if you don't like what you're eating, you're never gonna stick with it, and I operate the same. I have no desire to eat anything that I don't like, so I have to make sure my food tastes really good. Everything that I share with you today tastes amazing. I wouldn't be eating it if it didn't. It may not taste amazing to you, but it certainly does to me. I encourage you today to ask yourself that question. What do 
I want my diet to achieve? What, do, what does my diet, what does my meal plan need to achieve for me? If it's weight loss, if it's physique goals, if it's health, some people aren't even concerned about being healthy. They just want to lose weight. Well, that's gonna say a lot about what you're gonna take in in your diet. Hopefully you can get to a place where healthy is important because that's gonna hold and sustain you for the long run, but only you can identify and answer that goal. What do I want my diet to achieve for me? So let's go over a couple of things that you'll want to know about me before we dive in. Number one, I don't count calories. I do know what my basal metabolic rate is, and that's only because when I work with clients in coaching, sometimes we use myself as an example when we find out what someone's BMR is. I also don't prescribe to any specific type of diet. I don't follow keto or paleo or carnivore, vegan, vegetarian. I don't prescribe to any diet. I just eat clean, nutritionally dense food that serves my body, that's easy and keeps me in my weight window. I like it that way. I'm not against any specific diet. I believe everyone has to do what works for them. For me, I'm maintaining my weight window, plugging along, doing what I'm doing, and I'm crushing and achieving my physique goals. So clearly it's working for me. I don't have any known sensitivities. I'm not sensitive to gluten that I'm aware of. I'm not sensitive to dairy that I'm aware of. And I don't think I would want to take any test to find out because I feel really good and my energy is up. But I will tell you where I am sensitive and that is overeating. If I overeat, you better believe I'm sensitive. I will get very inflamed. And then there's another thing that happens when I overeat. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's called weight gain. Yes, weight gain. It is such a thing. Maybe you're familiar with it. Let me know in the comment section below if you're familiar with weight gain when you eat too much. That is my biggest sensitivity. If I overeat and I do it too often, you better believe I'm sensitive and that scale is going to creep up. Luckily, I know my body and I know how many celebration meals, cheat meals, whatever you'd like to call them, I get away with per week to maintain my weight window. I cannot say I'm on a diet. I can't say I really ever, well, I can't say I've never dieted, but I'm not on what I would call a diet, meaning there's really no restriction. It's just that I do not permit myself to put on weight. I don't have any clothes to wear if I do. So you can call it what you want. This is just my nutrition plan, my meal plan. I do, I do struggle with people that have negative energy around the word diet. I do believe that dieting is okay because there's a time and a place for it. And many people need to implement dieting so that they can get healthy. So it really, it really bothers me that so many of you are probably hearing, oh, I don't follow a diet, dieting's bad. Well, nothing is bad unless you want to make it. But if you grew up in a household or you're surrounded with people that push out that negative word of diet's bad, diet's negative, well, clearly we know that it speaks for themselves. Diet is not bad and there may be a time and a place in someone's life where they need to be on a diet because if you creep out of your weight window or you're an unhealthy weight, well, how are you gonna get there, right? You do have to do some restricting. You do have to set up some parameters and rules and boundaries or you're never gonna get there. So if you're anti the word diet, it would make complete sense. You're stuck where you're at and you're probably not making any progress. So that's all of a mindset shift. And in coaching, I will help you with shifting that mindset so that you can achieve your goals and get in your weight window as well. I know that I don't do good with deprivation. That's another reason why I don't really ever go on a diet because you do have to deprive yourself a little bit. It would make sense. And again, that serves you in a, in a period of time so you can get where you want to be. You do have to restrict. It's just, it is what it is. I know that I don't like that. I don't like deprivation. I don't like restriction. And I work out really hard. So I don't want to have to scale back if I don't have to. And that's why I maintain my weight window so I never have to go on a diet. It's a beautiful place to be. But I will share with you, once you get to your weight window, 
The work doesn't stop. It's day in, day out. You have to be conscious and aware of everything you're putting in your mouth. You have to get to know your body. You have to know how much fluff you get away with. I work out five days per week very hard. You know I get up at 4 a.m. I have videos where I talk about that. And I do my, my workout first thing. I start about 4.15. So when I share with you what I eat in a day, I'm gonna put the time in that I eat my food. Now understand that that time can vary because I have clients throughout the day. So it's not uncommon where I could be kind of hungry for let's say meal number two or meal number three but because I have a client, I have to wait until I'm out of that session and eat before the next session with the next client. So my times are not always the same. The food is pretty typical. I would say what, what I share with you today is pretty typical. I have protein in every single meal. If I don't have something, if I don't have chicken on hand, I'll replace it with another protein source. I won't replace it with another or a different macronutrient. I will replace protein for protein. I will replace fat for fat. I also don't count macros. I don't need to do any of that. What's working for me is, is keeping me where I'd like to be. I do believe in calorie counting if you're trying to lose weight, and it's so important to know your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, your resting metabolic rate is really key in knowing how much exercise you get in. I have to fuel my body to keep my energy up. I am not gonna encourage anyone here today to eat what I'm eating because your BMR would have to be the same, your goals would have to be the same, meaning you'd have to be in your maintenance window, not out of it, because this wouldn't be for weight loss. And also, are you burning as many calories in a given week as I do? Most people aren't. If you're just walking, you're not even close to burning how many calories I do in getting your heart rate spiked up into that fat burning zone, which to me is so important. But we will talk more about that one-on-one -on -one in coaching or in another video when I talk about exercise. I have a whole library talking about diet and exercise. You just need to go through it all. So we are going to dive in now to what I eat in a day. Now again, this is pretty typical. Um, there could be some modifications. Again, if I don't have something on hand, you are not going to see recipes. You are not going to see a lot of fluff because that just adds work that I don't have time for. It also adds calories and macronutrients, which again, I don't count those, but I would know if I'm eating too much. I would say every one of you watching, you know if you've ate too much and you know if you're in a deficit. Your body will not lie to you, but there's a lot of things that you need to learn about yourself to get yourself acclimated to the amount of calories that your body needs so that you can lose weight or maintain that weight. Currently, I get away with about two celebratory meals, not days. Let me say that again, two celebratory or cheat meals per week. These are not days. In fact, on days that I take a celebratory meal, I typically scale way back. So what I share with you today of what I eat in a day is not on a day that I'm taking a celebratory meal. If I was taking a celebratory meal today, I would be scaling back and eliminating some things. Most often, I continue with my protein sources, but I scale back on fat and carbohydrates because I know I will get plenty of fat and carbohydrates in my celebratory meal. I also do not have any rules or boundaries around my celebratory or cheat meals. I eat whatever I would like. I love bread, love it. I eat the bread, I eat the salad, I have wine and sometimes I have dessert. My celebratory meals are very hearty and I eat it all. <laughs> I eat it all. I don't get full easy. I don't get stuffed or full easy. I wish I did, but I don't. I typically eat everything. I get away with about two of those per week and I can still maintain my weight window of 120 to 125. Now, believe me, 
The day after taking a celebratory meal, I am gonna be creeping up. If I was at the low part of my weight window going into that celebratory meal, I may only be at the higher part of my weight window, but if I was at the middle to higher part, well, I know that taking a celebratory meal brings on inflammation, right? Because all of this standard American diet food that I just ate, my body is not really used to. So it is very inflammatory, but I wouldn't call it necessarily a sensitivity. Like I have a sensitivity to something, although I'm inflamed. If you overeat, you are going to be inflamed. And I know clearly I overeat on my celebratory meals. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It works for me. I'm always back on the plan. It's the people that aren't back on the plan that the weight just keeps creeping up. But if I, I don't ever weigh myself the day after a celebratory meal, I stay off the scale, and I also really scale back that day after. I drink a ton of water that day, which I drink a ton of water every day, so maybe I just drink the same amount. But I know how to work with my body. I'm not concerned about the neighbor's body or, or the sister's body or the sister-in-law's body or the friend's body like so many of you are. Clearly, clearly what I'm sharing with you today works for me. Clearly, okay? I'm 50, I'm maintaining my weight, I look great, I'm in great shape, I am an athlete. I'm not just in shape, I'm an athlete. I've worked hard to get there. So clearly what I'm doing is working for me. But I do take those two celebratory meals per week. If I take a third one, or if I extend that celebratory meal into too many hours, because let's say we're at a gathering, yeah, I, I may creep out of my weight window and I buckle down hard. Maybe that's dieting a little bit. Maybe I restrict that next day. It's okay, clearly. Clearly it works for me. Give it a try sometimes. Try to diet and restrict a little and see what happens, okay? You have to learn to know your body. And again, I would love to help you. So we're gonna dive in. Again, I get up at 4 a.m. pretty much every day. I work out five days per week. I start my workout between 4.15 and 4.20. I bust out that workout and then we go into meal one which is going to be a post-workout meal. But let's dive in, let me take you along. I will share different nuggets throughout. And don't forget, there's always links to everything. Outfit and beauty details are always linked on the corresponding blog post. So click that top link in the description box below today's video. That will direct you to the corresponding blog post. Outfit and beauty details are there. Also, anything that I can link I will have links to. Also some recipes, how I cook my vegetables, I have that recipe. My lemon ginger detox that I drink first thing in the morning, recipe for that. My green smoothie, recipe for that. How I cook my salmon. Sometimes people are tripped up by how much fish I eat. No worries, I don't eat any fish that concerns me. Um, I, my, my metals are, I, I get my blood work done all the time, believe me. Uh, things are looking good. I always hear the same thing every year. Your blood work is like, like, like the A++ that we wanna put on the refrigerator, okay? So you have to really get to know you, trust your body, work with your practitioner, tune out the naysayers telling you that diets aren't good for you, and you'll start seeing some results and, and, and work with me if you need help. So, okay, let's dive in. Let's, let's start out with what happens right out of bed. Here you see two blender bottle cups and a couple of supplements. As soon as I get out into the kitchen after putting on my workout clothes, I take these two cups out of the refrigerator. I have the water measured in them. Again, I prepped these blender bottle cups the day before. When I'm done with them in the morning, I'll wash them and then I'll prep them for the next day. The pink one has eight ounces of water in it, the black one has 10 ounces of water in it. The Spark Energy Drink, I pour in the pink blender bottle, I shake that up and I drink it as I'm getting everything ready to head downstairs for my workout. So I don't even take the pink cup with me, it's already drank prior to me heading downstairs. The black cup that you see is what I will drink post-workout. As soon as I come upstairs from my workout, I will drink that one. While I'm drinking that pre-workout drink in the pink blender bottle cup, 
I am making my lemon ginger detox. The recipe for this is linked in the description box below. I have this every single morning. So again, I've already drank my pink blender bottle with the Spark Energy. I make this and I carry this lemon ginger detox into the basement with me. So the two drinks that go into the basement for my workout is a 16 ounce bottle of water and my lemon ginger detox. Before we dive into my post-workout meal number one, I want to show you my water bottles. I prepped and filled these glass water bottles yesterday. I always do that. I prep them the day before. You know I organize tomorrow today. There's about 16 ounces of water in each one of these. I drink the first one upon awakening when I'm in my walk-in closet putting on my workout clothes for today's workout. The second one I take with me in the basement and I drink the whole entire bottle then. The rest of the bottles I drink all throughout the day. My workout on this particular day took about an hour and 24 minutes and I burned over 500 calories. My workouts last anywhere between an hour and 10 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes. It just depends on what I'm doing. What you're looking at here are all of the ingredients to make my post-workout breakfast. This will be meal number one, which consists of four scrambled egg whites. I don't put anything in the pan just the egg whites with some salt and Himalayan pink sea salt. Once the eggs are scrambled, I put them in a bowl and I top them with this Trader Joe's seasoning that I love. I will have it linked. And then in the other bowl, you will see cream of rice cereal. Now, cream of rice cereal wouldn't be for everyone and it's really a high glycemic index carbohydrate, which means it activates fast in our bloodstream. You wouldn't want to have this any other time of the day except post-workout. I would not recommend anyone having cream of rice if they are trying to lose weight or struggling with their weight window unless you've done an extremely hard workout. If you simply walk Cream of rice cereal is not going to do anything for you. Because I'm all about my physique, I know what high glycemic carbohydrates can do for someone like me, especially on a clean diet and a rigid exercise routine. I like to get those muscle glycogen stores restored and cream of rice cereal will do that. So this is meal number one. And again, the time that I have this will vary according to how long my workout took that day, but you can see the time in the photo. While I'm eating meal number one and cleaning up all of my dishes and organizing tomorrow today by prepping everything for tomorrow's workout, I make my dandelion root tea with hibiscus and cinnamon. I drink one of these every single day right at this time. It's all on routine. After I finish my dandelion root tea, I will move on to coffee. I always have my first cup of coffee black with one packet of stevia. When I'm done with that, I will move on to my second cup of coffee, which is equivalent to the same size. It's about 10 to 12 ounces of coffee. I put one packet of stevia in my second cup as well, but I take about one third cup of silk unsweetened almond milk and I froth it and I put it on top and it's kind of like my bougie yummy coffee. Not too many calories because I'm sticking with that unsweetened almond milk. I believe it's around 30 calories per serving and I'm not sure what the serving size is. Let me also share that the day that I filmed this What I Eat in a Day, I have clients at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. I am always working my eating around my schedule with clients. So the time that I eat varies every single day, but just know that my first meal always takes place post-workout. I don't intermittent fast. Here you'll see meal number two. Now a lot of people would think of this green smoothie as simply a snack, but I do count it as a meal. 
I like my green smoothie because I need simple, like I shared earlier, I need easy, I don't have a lot of time. So what I do is I make a green smoothie so that I can get my vegetable allowance in for the day versus having to eat vegetables all day long in my meals. This packs a punch, I do have a YouTube video and recipe on how to make this green smoothie. It's very delicious. I do add some protein powder to it. I have protein in every single meal because it serves me very well. Moving on to meal number three, this is three ounces of chicken breast and half of an avocado sprinkled with Himalay Himalayan pink sea salt. On top of the chicken, I have that seasoning from Trader Joe's. I just really love that and it doesn't add anything bad for me, but this is meal number three. And again, bear in mind that the times that I am showing with you vary from day to day according to my client schedule for that day. Sometimes I'm really hungry because of the way that my day operates with clients. So I do try to have a lot of my food ready to go and prepared. I like to think ahead. If I know I have a client coming up and I I know when I jump out, I'm going to be hungry. I will take the necessary steps to make sure I have something ready to go. Ah, meal number four. This is one packet of tuna. The tuna was packed in water. It's plain. I don't add anything to my tuna. I just open up the pouch, scrape everything out onto this plate, and then I take a jar of roasted red peppers, and I take some out, and I cut it up, usually about one-third cup chopped. I put on top and it's delicious, but I love tuna and the roasted red peppers really add some good flavor to it. You are probably seeing I don't have a lot of fluff to anything that I eat. There's no recipes here. I just keep it simple, but I do enjoy and like everything that I eat. On this particular day, I, because of my client schedule, I was really hungry and I needed something to tie me over between meals. When I do, I always take a half of a cucumber, I peel it, I slice it, and I top it with Himalayan pink sea salt and pepper to tie me over until the next meal. This doesn't take place every single day. Just when I have a heavy load and I need something to tie me over. I used the other half of the cucumber earlier that day when I made my green smoothie. So I always have cucumbers on hand because I need them for the green smoothie, but I love the crunch of a cucumber and a cucumber is never gonna get you in trouble. The problem that people have is the snacks that they eat to tie them over between meals often come in a package and then they wonder why they're not achieving their goals or maintaining their weight window or losing weight. You just simply need to have some vegetables, something like celery or cucumbers and leave it at that. Your snacks can really, really get you into trouble. Moving on to meal number five, which is really my favorite meal of the day because I love salmon. First, you're looking at my freezer. This is my salmon stash. I only purchase wild caught salmon. I get sockeye and coho because they are wild caught. And I also love the Maryland crab cakes. So I order some of those. I have tried different online companies to purchase my fish from. I've also used a local fish market. I will have linked below where I'm currently on rotation to get my monthly fish supply, but these have been great and I've been happy with the with the line, with the online site so far. They are not an affiliate site, but I'm happy to share their website with you. I'm going to show meal number 5 three days in a row so that you can see I'm typically eating the same thing. Um, if the salmon fillets that I open up in a package are really small, I may have two. So you will see that in the very first photo and then you'll see in the second and third photo, I had a salmon fillet and a crab cake, which yum, so delicious. And then typically I always add asparagus to this meal. I will have my salmon recipe linked as well as my roasted vegetable recipe. That is how I typically make my asparagus or I steam them. You're going to have a little bit less calories if you steam them. So sometimes I will do that as well, especially if I'm not baking something like my fish. But asparagus is one of my favorite vegetables of source. Broccoli would be another one. Uh, Brussels sprouts is another one that I really like. On this particular day, I had everything ready to go so that Paul could throw 
the pan in the oven and bake everything for me so it was ready to go when I got out of that four to five o'clock coaching session. I like to be done eating between five and 5.30. Sometimes I'm done eating as early as 3.30 or four, it just depends. On this particular day, this was my final meal. Here you see egg salad. This is three egg whites that were boiled in one full egg. So I used four eggs, but three of the eggs were whites only in one full egg. Salt, Himalayan pink sea salt, and then topped it with that Trader Joe's seasoning. This meal, I'm just showing you. On the day that I filmed, I didn't need this meal, but if I do need an additional meal, because let's say meal number five, I did eat around 3, 3.30 or even sometimes 2.30. Again, my days vary. It's just how it is. Then I will eat something like this as a backup because I still need a little bit more food. But just bear in mind that I'm typically always done eating by 5 to 5.30 at the latest, sometimes a little bit earlier. So I did want to show this as an alternate meal that sometimes I do need to incorporate. I don't like being hungry, but I've really conditioned and trained my body to expect to be done eating hours before I go to bed. I go to bed around seven, between seven and eight. I try to be in bed between seven and 7.30, lights out at eight, and I love to shut my eating down plenty early. Well, there you go. What do you think? Leave in the comment section below. What do you think of my meals? Nothing fancy, but everything tastes great. I love it all. And if you go back and watch all the past videos from the last, what, six years, you're probably going to see a lot of the same food. I love keeping my protein high. Uh, my body thrives so well with a high protein diet. So protein in every meal, you, you would have witnessed that. And that's really an important factor for me. I also do really well with these small meals throughout the day versus that big meal. But when I take that celebratory meal, you better believe it's quite grand. And I celebrate, I celebrate. Never any shame or guilt, no rules, just whatever I would like to have. I treat myself, I work very hard for it, and it's working for me and that's the key. So don't forget to check out all of the links below. Please search my YouTube channel, I have so many videos on diet and exercise. You, I don't even know where to begin. I, I couldn't link them all. You just have to get on there and search. And then stay tuned. I have a really great workshop coming up in April. There will be information in the drop down box or on the corresponding blog post if there's not enough room down below. But it is a, it is a life blueprint of your life. Where are you putting your time? Where are you putting your energy? What do you value? Because where you put your time is what you value. So you can say all day you value something, but if you can't prove it because your time is not going there, you're only lying and kidding to yourself. If you think you value your health, but you're not doing anything to prove that, you're not exercising, you're not working out, you're not protecting your sleep, you're not eating a clean diet. You can say you value your health all day long and you're just blowing smoke. Well, this workshop's going to help identify what you value because then you can say, hmm, is that serving me? Is that working for me? If not, what do I need to change? And I would love to help you. So check out all the information on the Life Blueprint Workshop coming up very soon and you can get registered. I encourage you to take a part of that. As soon as you register, you will receive a questionnaire to help you prepare for that workshop so that you come armed and loaded with what you value and then we can dissect it. Thanks for joining me today. I so appreciate it. I shared a lot, but I believe the details are what make the biggest difference. It's not just what someone eats in a day and be careful, be careful eating the same thing someone else does. That could sabotage your goals. You have to know your BMR, would love to help you identify how many calories you should be eating in a day and what type of foods based off of what your goals are. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you right here on YouTube. Take care.